Hello, I am so excited today because I have Aviana Aircraft coming to my hangar here in Georgia to help me polish up my new to me 1957 182. And I'm so excited because they specialize in restoring paint and polishing. They make old airplanes look like new. They make new airplanes look like even more new and they operate all over the country. So today they're here with me and they're going to teach me how to polish the airplane. That way when they're not here, I can keep up with it and know what I'm doing. So let's see how this goes. Since they are coming to teach me how to polish the airplane, they sent me a whole long laundry list of stuff. It's this entire table's worth. So let's take a look and see what was on the shopping list. Okay, starting over here, we have a random orbit polisher. So instead of going in a regular circle, it kind of makes a funky circle. That's as much as I know about that. Then we bought this the other day. Both of these are from Harbor Freight. This is a seven inch polisher that just goes in a regular circle. All different types of pads for all of those. I had bought polish, which apparently I bought the wrong kind. We are not going to use mother's polish. We are going to be using new shine. So this is what we're looking at. And there's all different types of grits. And apparently this is the good stuff. We even asked them to sponsor this. They said, no, we're still using it. So you know it's gotta be good. We got some different cleaners. We got whatever this is. It looks like it's from the Wild West. Looks like a boot spur. So I'm curious to see where that's gonna be used. All different types of cleaners. We have a ton of microfiber cloths, polishing towels. These towels are so soft, you could sleep with them. They are like blankets. We got some safety goggles, polishing pads, lots of paper towels and gloves. And he told me to make sure I wear clothes that I don't mind getting dirty. So that's a lot of stuff. Now let's take a look at my airplane. That way you can see what we're working with. It needs a lot of love. Starting back here at the tail, we've got the traditional logo. All of the teal paint is new. That was just done um, back in its original scheme. And what was not done is all the black paint and all of the aluminum needs to be polished. So you can see it is quite dirty. got a little bit of attention before we bought it was the body so the body is not as terrible as the rest it's certainly not a mirror but it is better than the tail and the wings when mayor dad arrived he wanted to take care of the paint first so he took on responsibility of the black paint it's very thin original paint and look at the before and after on the cowling the left hand side he hadn't touched yet. The right hand side was restored at this point. Here's back at the tail. You can even see some spots uh, where it's so thin you can see right through it. But he took great care and it's literally like magic when he was done. It went from really cloudy, opaque to nice black looking brand new. This was worth it for me already. I was taking care of the teal paint. Uh, that's newer paint and just got me some experience with the tools before we ceramic coated it and then got on to polishing. All right, so yesterday I had Merdad come and we did all like paint restoration and a ceramic coating. And that was to obviously restore the paint and to protect it for when we do 
our big job today. What are we doing today? Well, today we're gonna make a big mess. We're gonna <laughs> polish the aluminum. Like you said yesterday, we, we did the paint and the reason we wanna do the paint first is to protect that. When you polish aluminum, all this black oxide comes off and it really likes to stain paint and kind of turn it silver and we don't wanna do that. So today we are going to start with a more aggressive cut first. There's a lot of swirls and deeper scratches that we're gonna try and get out. And then from there, it, it's going to be a continual process of refinement. So they, there's a real zen to aluminum polishing that, that hopefully I can teach you that today. <laughs> yeah, that's the goal is for me to learn how to do this. Right. We're doing I the, don't want to do it. <laughs> the big project now, but I want to be able to maintain it myself. So let's get to it. So for polishing aluminum, if you have a plane like this and, and you want to get after it as well, you don't necessarily have to spend a ton of money on tools. I have two different kinds of tools that I like to use. So one is a dual action. So as, as I pull it, you see how it, it, it can kind of free spin like this, but when you apply power, it makes a random orbit, right? This is a flex cordless. It has a 15 millimeter random orbit, which means this offset is 15 millimeters. Uh, that, that's a good healthy amount. The other kind of tool is a rotary. A rotary just goes in a circle. Rotaries are more effective at putting power into the paint. Um, however, they're a little bit more risky to use and we'll talk about some of the concerns with that. This is a very safe tool um, and, and it can actually still put a, quite a bit of power down, but for really heavy oxidation, we would use something like a rotary first, then use this. We also have pads we need to talk about. This is the Rupes Blue Foam Wool Pad. This is a different wool pad. Um, as you can see, these are, you know, it, it's a fibrous material and it can hold on to a lot of polish and it's more abrasive. There's also foam pads, which are softer, and, and these we would use for finishing versus cutting. Um, the firmness is a big deal, and you can think of this as a suspension. So. A very firm pad is going to transfer more of this energy into the paint or onto the surface so you're going to get more action. Softer pads, it's more buffered, you're going to have a little bit less cutting action. So we can vary how much action we're putting into the surface by pad, by tool, and by uh, products, which we'll talk about that later. So since he's so good at polishing, he claims that it's the mustache. Anytime I've had a good polishing experience, I've had a mustache. And I trust him, so let's do this thing. That's a great mustache. <laughs> <laughs> Take a look. What do you think? I'm liking what I'm seeing. Me too. So we went from up here where we have holograms and general dullness. In a single step, we went to a mirror. So the after lunch update, we've put I'm not even sure what time it is. How many hours have we put into this so far? Four-ish? Four? Four and a half. Okay. So eight mustache hours, even though she took her mustache off. We got the whole left side initially uh, cut. I, I want to do this process such that if I have to leave, the plane looks good. It doesn't look unfinished. Um, to me, holograms look unfinished, so we try and avoid using the rotary. Though there's some spots where you kind of have to use the rotary, but for the most part, we got everything in a pretty even, consistent, shiny finish. Before we called it a night, Kevin got home from work and he wanted to put a few hours in as well. So I got to teach him all the things I learned today. Or five. Okay. And then you start working a lot slower, kind of like in a grid. 
and keeping it flat. And this button holds the trigger for you. To my surprise, he actually listened. So while he got working on the horizontal, I got to take on the elevator controls, which was definitely the hardest part for me. All right, I'm finishing my masterclass with Aviana Aircraft. We've done pretty much the whole body, the struts, the tail, the only thing that he's left for me to do on my own is the wing. How? Just a small part. <laughs> yeah. Small part. <laughs> the wings, <laughs> plural. Um, Tops and bottoms. Do you believe in me? Do you think I can do oh, this? Oh yeah, you can do it. And I've seen Kevin do it too. So worst case, we can get Kevin to do it. Yeah, I think we just get Kevin to do it. And he did period. this part. Like if you, like right behind you, right there, this little piece. Yes. He got started, so he knows how to do it. That he's was... proved he can do it, yes. which was probably a mistake. I would never make that mistake. So. <laughs> yeah, and he he wasn't even complaining all that much. So. <laughs> I think he's excited to do it. Just a few curse words. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you so much for coming and helping yeah. us restore this vintage 182. I'm really excited to take care of it now that I have all the knowledge and power to do so. Yeah, it was fun.